Good afternoon, my name is Dave Norton from Discovering New England History. We're going to continue on with episode three of the uh, great locomotive chase involving a uh, New England soldier, Robert Buffum. And he won the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor for all his activities as part of the great locomotive chase, which took place in uh, Georgia and Tennessee during the Civil War. And we'll go to the next slide. And I just want to uh, uh, reiterate what we have here. This under, was an under, undercover raid behind enemy lines. Very unconventional, never tried before <laughs> in a Civil War. If you take a look at the picture here on the uh, left, that's how they fight, fought the battles. You can see all the Union soldiers lined up as far as you can see, and then you can see the Confederates way across the open field. Um, what they would do is find out where each position was. They would send out uniform scouts, and the scouts wouldn't do anything. They would just come back and tell the generals and where their positions are, and then the generals re reinforce their lines. And when they were ready, they would all line up here in an open field, charge across the field, and, and go at each other. That's the way the battles were fought. Now, in this one here, this was a raid, <laughs> 200 miles behind enemy lines. I mean, this is, one, actually, they said it's one, one of the most bold and daring uh, escapades uh, ever in the United States soil. And, of course, the big difference here is uh, these uh, 20 soldiers that went on the uh, great, great uh, locomotive chase, first of all, they're all volunteers. They're all soldiers, most of them from uh, the state of Ohio except for Robert Buffum. And the difference here is, in order to not be discovered, they, had, they couldn't wear uniforms, and they had to wear their civilian clothes. Now, the difference there is, if you're caught by the uh, Confederates, you can be tried as a spy and hung. If you were caught, uh, for instance, as in, in a battle with your uniform on, you're considered a prisoner of war, and it would just be captured and put you in a prison camp. So this is an incredible story uh, of the Civil War. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, we're just continuing here. The general crosses the Etowa Bridge, which is in Georgia. Uh, full, full speed here on the, um, the general, of course, is the locomotive that was stolen. And heading up north, the idea of uh, ripping up tracks behind them and burning bridges if they can. We'll go to the next slide. And we mentioned this about removing the railroad tracks. Um, the right way to do it is starting from the left here, you would just rip up all the, uh, all the tracks, and then you would pile up all the railroad ties, and then you would start a fire, just like you see in the middle picture there. And uh, what happens was you would heat up the middle of each one of those tracks that are set there in the pile. And they would get uh, very malleable. You could be able to bend them. And you can see on the right, you would bend them around uh, probably a telegraph pole. No one else could use them again. Now, because the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the general was being traced, chased so fast, they couldn't do that. All they could do was rip up the track, stop, rip up the tracks, and um, either take the rails and throw them in the woods next day or, or, or pile a couple of them in their box cars and then continue. That's all they could do. And of course, who's ever following you behind in another train would have to repair those sections. And this is, uh, which I have here, and I, it's a, it's a uh, spike they use to, <laughs> to hold the tracks together, which I, I brought one right here. It's made out of iron. It's quite... Uh, quite heavy, but you can imagine here, and all the raiders had, and they all, they, all they had, because they, when they stole the train and made their way down to uh, Georgia, obviously the only thing they had were pistols on. They, they didn't have any tools or anything, so when they stopped and got, they got, you know, could only get a single crowbar, that's all they used to pull, pull all these up from the tracks. And uh, that's an actual, uh, actual railroad spike. And it was quite, uh, quite an operation there. So we'll go to the next slide. And they also cut uh, telegraph lines. You can see John Scott was one of the raiders, and he's the one they had. He would just shimmy up the poles and up on the top there, just like you can see on the right. And he would cut the telegraph lines so that uh, <clears throat> once they found out uh, 
stopped at a depot and they found out, the, the Confederates found out that the train was stolen, they would immediately go to the telegraph and try to send a message up the line. And so after the uh, raiders went through each one of these depots that we talked about, they would just stop and uh, go up the line there and cut the telegraph so they couldn't uh, warn uh, subsequent depots up the line. And uh, the telegraph lines followed the railroad tracks. And you can see that in the center there. Um, and it was a very, very technological advance back then. You remember, there's, there's no telephones or anything, no computers, nothing like that. Uh, the only com it was one of the big technological advances of the Civil War, the telegraph. Now you could commute from army to army, generals to generals, hundreds of miles between them, and tell, tell them uh, with the telegraph where you are and what's going on. So we'll go to the next slide. Now Samuel Morse, uh, back during the Civil War, or right before it, he invented, invented the telegraph. And there is some history on him, there's some research, and believe it or not, there's another New England connection. He's from Charleston, Massachusetts, Samuel Morse. And I got a picture over there on the, on the left of your screen, which is his house in Charleston, Massachusetts. And of course, on the right is the uh, telegraph key. And uh, the telegraph played a huge part, technological, uh, advance in uh, warfare during the Civil War. Surely not, uh, not to be overlooked, communication. So we'll go to the next slide. And the picture there shows Union soldiers installing telegraph lines. And on the right of your picture, uh, he invented what they call the Morse code. And you can see the chart there, all the letters of the alphabet and all the numbers. And uh, everything was... Uh, uh, on the uh, telegraph key, dots and dashes. And if you're a real highly trained operator, you could, um, a message would be sent and they would spell it out and as the letters came across like that, you would, you would write the message on a, uh, on a piece of paper and quickly send it up, up the line. It was a huge part of uh, communications. And they said during this time, most of the telegraph operators were off in the north. <laughs> and a lot of them before the Civil War came down and they joined the uh, Confederate Army. Interesting uh, point of history. And we'll go to the next slide. And I got this one here. The, uh, the big company down in, uh, in the south was the Southern Express Company for Telegraphs. And that's an actual uh, Confederate telegram message. What you can see, the operator would sit there and he would get the dashes and dots and everything for all the letters, spell it out, and he would write it on this pad, Southern Express Company, fold it up, tuck it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, and it would uh, mail it to uh, whoever it was going, going to or take it by courier to, uh, uh, to a general or somebody like that. And communication was incredible. We'll go to the next slide. Now, the general, which is, of course, the locomotive, heads north. Now, it's pulling three box cars. It already ditched all the passenger cars. And uh, the, uh, the head uh, radar, of course, is James Andr Andrews. And Robert Buffum from Massachusetts was with him in one of those box cars. And they're going to head north and hit the depots at uh, Cartersville, Cass Station, and Kingston. These are all in Georgia. And you can see on the map there, we started out on the bottom in Atlanta in previous episodes, and now we're going to hit, the, hit these three uh, stations. And of course, they're being chased by uh, uh, Fuller, who was in charge of the, um, uh, the Confederate. He, he was actually the original uh, uh, conductor on the general. So we'll go to the next slide. And this is a great picture here. It's, they steam right through the Cartersville Depot. <laughs> They were, they were supposed to stop there, but they were being chased, so they, they steamed right through, and the Cartersville, Georgia depot is still there today. A lot of these, uh, a few of these depots uh, still survive to this day, and probably more than likely those like this one here made out of, uh, made out of bricks. And there's the tracks. You can see the general just blazing right through this, uh, this depot. We'll go to the next slide. Then they stop at Cass Station, and I was fortunate to get some of these older uh, photographs of the Civil War, and that's what it would look like. They're just these small uh, stone buildings uh, with a wood roof. There's the track there on the right, 
And this is a very important stop because once again, we had uh, the locomotive runs on uh, water to make the steam and also wood for the fire. And um, you have to have the wood and you have to have uh, the water. And to go from Atlanta up to Chattanooga, which is the final uh, destination of the Raiders, um, it, it's equivalent to five cords of wood. That's what they needed. So they were running really low on wood, so they stopped here at Cass Station. And we'll go to the next slide. And this is a great couple of pictures here. General takes on wood and water. You can see on the uh, left, that's an actual station. You can see the large water tower. Uh, the train would stop here. And on the right is a great depiction. It's actually a scale model showing how uh, the general would have uh, taken on wood and water. If you take a look at that picture there closely next to the, the tender car, which is right in back of the general, you can see a fellow down there with a uh, several cords of wood and he would be throwing it up to somebody else and filling that whole uh, car behind the engine with cord wood. You can see another fellow on the top with the two water tanks. He would fill the water for the boiler. And they had to do this really, really fast. You can see the box car behind there. And uh, the idea was uh, another train was coming behind them. They're getting chased. So they couldn't take on as much wood as they wanted or as much water. They had to just get whatever they could and keep on going heading north. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, they're approaching Kingston Depot. This was a great big railroad center where a lot of lines came from the west and from the north and from the south. And there are a lot of different uh, uh, <clears throat> bypass and sightings that you could take here to let one train pass or another pass. And you can see this one here was just bustling with uh, the Confederate Army. So now here's the general, <laughs> about 150 miles behind the uh, Confederate lines coming into Kingston Depot. And they were stuck there. So we'll go to the next slide. They had to wait. There was a single track section coming down from the north. And what happened was the Union Army was sort of uh, approaching Chattanooga. And the rebel army was sending some troops down, trying to e evacuate as much as they could. And so they were sending these trains down. And they didn't, uh, uh, certainly James Andrews never expected that. And they were sending these trains down the track south. And so what happened was, in order to get out of Kingston, uh, Andrews stopped and he talked to the uh, station manager, whatever, at the Kingston Depot. There's a picture of it in the middle. And w what he had to do is uh, he found out there was three trains that had to go past before they could continue. And in the meantime, the other uh, uh, small train is being uh, chased up the line trying to catch them. And I showed the boxcar here over on the left. All 16 Raiders were combined in the boxcar at this depot with Robert Buffum as one of them. And they didn't know what was going on. <laughs> we'll go to the next slide. And so he came up with a story. He had to get something here because uh, the, uh, the station master, whatever, was saying, that's interesting. You've got three boxcars. There's no passenger cars. This train's supposed to have passenger cars. Try to explain what you're doing. And he came up with a story that he, uh, the three boxcars were full of ammunition heading north to support General Beauregard of the Confederate Army so he could defeat General Mitchell of the Union Army. And he had to get uh, stop trains or whatever to keep on going forward or else General Beauregard uh, would be in trouble. And one train came by, second train came by, and they're still waiting for trains, and the, the clock is ticking here, and the men are just stuck here in this uh, boxcar. We'll go to the next slide. And what happened here is the general, wait, they ended up waiting for a little over an hour, 65 minutes. And finally, William Knight, you can see his picture there, second on the left, he was the, uh, actually the engineer, and uh, Andrew said, you better go down there and uh, sort of nonchalantly uh, <laughs> tell the men what's going on. So the 16 Raiders were in the boxcar. They didn't know if they're going to get overrun by the Confederates. So they didn't know what was going on. So this is the actual quote here from William Knight. Boys, the folks around here are getting mighty suspicious. Be ready to jump out and let them have it hot and heavy. 
They were expected to get attacked and they would just slide the door open in a box car and fight for their lives. So we'll go to the next slide. But the third train passed and the tracks were clear north and the general just went right up the line with a sigh of relief. <laughs> so we'll go to the next slide. Now we'll take in the, the train that's chasing and we told you about the Yona, which was a small train that uh, Fuller had. He was the uh, conductor that he, that he uh, commandeered from the uh, ironworks. And he's chasing, he finally gets to uh, Kingston Depot and he, then he finds out that the general's already passed heading north. And so he abandoned this train and um, trying to talk his way to getting a more powerful train. So we'll go to the next slide. And coming in from the west was a train called the William R. Smith. You can see that there on the right. So he talked the uh, engineer into uh, commandeering that train and heading north to go after the general. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, the William R. Smith started really go going, uh, left the station, started going north, and of course, uh, the general, the other train, was doing everything he can to put uh, barricades in front. What they did was, on the last uh, boxcar, they punched a hole in the, in the back side of the boxcar so it was wide open so they could see the train behind them. And they also, when they ripped up a section of the tracks, they, they took the railroad ties and loaded them on the boxcar and took some of the tracks with them. And what they were doing is throwing out these uh, railroad ties and were, some of them were bouncing on the tracks off into the sign. Some got stuck in the rail. And what happened was uh, with the rail out, the, uh, this new uh, engine here could not continue up the line. And uh, they, couldn't, uh, they couldn't repair that track. They had no ways of repairing that track. So we'll go to the next slide. So the crew, <laughs> there's William Fuller. Now, he was actually the original conductor and the general. Anthony Murphy now is operating the train with Jefferson Kane. Once again, they did a foot race. <laughs> they, they left the uh, locomotive Smith and started started jogging up uh, to see if they could meet another southbound train and commandeer that. Of course, I, I show this picture in the front here because that's one of the, the tricks that the Raiders did. You can see the curve right here. And what they would do is if they were going fast and they wanted to block another train and take out a section of track, they would always do it on a curve. So the train were going really fast. They couldn't see ahead where the... Uh, rails were ripped up and the idea was what they wanted to do is just have the, the train just uh, hit where there's no rails and uh, essentially tip over. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. Now, so what happened was there was another southbound train called the Texas. It was coming from Chattanooga south towards Atlanta and it was on a section now where at the northern part there where the um, general was headed, where well, there are two tracks, one going north, one going south. So the Texas blasted right by the, uh, <laughs> the general, kept on going south. And Fuller and Murphy now, because Kane dropped out, commandeered the Texas. But the problem with this is they had no way of turning the engine around. So they, <laughs> they had to run the engine in reverse to chase the general, <laughs> which, was, which is an amazing story. So we'll continue on the next slide. And I'm showing the route here, see, you can see from Atlanta all the way down heading north, you can see where the, um, they picked up the uh, locomotive Smith, which was coming in from Rome. That's from the west, you can see that hitting Kingston. And they started up towards Adairsville. And that's where the Raiders uh, ripped up the tracks and threw the ties down and then the uh, Smith was just flat stuck. Um, so now the general heads north toward Adairsville and Resaca, Georgia. Here we'll go to the next slide. And this is uh, 
quite a station here, Adairsville Station. Now, the Texas was carrying freight cars, <laughs> but it was going in reverse. So they, it was slowing them down. So when they got to the Adairsville Station, Fuller made the idea, had the idea, <clears throat> hey, there's a siding right here. We're going to back the train off. We're going to uncouple the, fre the uh, freight cars and box cars and just have the engine and the tender, which they did. Of course, that cost them some time now, so now they're falling behind. And so there's a picture there of the, uh, one of the few pictures of the actual Texas. And so he couldn't, he, he couldn't turn the engine around at the Air Daresville station. So he headed up the line in reverse, continuing on, but he could go a lot faster now. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> now, the general, they could see the, uh, the smoke there from the following train. And uh, James Andrews, of course, was running the original general, not slow, but he was running it the, the way they would have normally done to pull the passengers, uh, passenger cars, so that the uh, Southern uh, Confederacy wouldn't know that this train was anything out of the ordinary. Same time, you know, they had their watches, whatever. Okay, here comes the northbound train. They would have that, but now he knows he's being chased. And his quote is, let's see how fast she can go. <laughs> so for full head of steam on the general, it was well oiled and maintained during their long stop at Kingston. Uh, he poured oil that they had on the wood to make it burn hotter. Uh, and of course, now they had to have some help in the back throwing the uh, cordwood into the uh, boiler. They had to load it faster. And uh, he, was, <laughs> he got a speed of 70 miles per hour pulling, <laughs> pulling the train and the uh, three boxcars. And it was said the, uh, the fellow, like uh, uh, Buffum in the back with the rest of the Raiders, were bounced from side to side. It said the train went so fast that. Uh, the actual cars are jumping up in the air and coming back down on the tracks. It was a heck of a ride. Um, heading north, he, he wanted to go as fast as he could to get really to the main bridge that they wanted to set fire to. So we'll go to the next slide. Now the Texas uh, stops along the way. There's a young fellow named Ed Henderson. That's uh, the only picture we have that's on his left. And he was a telegraph operator. And he was notified because all these subs, uh, these uh, previous depots that were stopped, all their tele telegraph communications went dead. So they got in touch with him, and he was kind of going up in the line to try to see what was going on, where the lines were stopped, see if he could fix them. And see, he was walking along the railroad tracks. You can see uh, he had some help there, going up on the pole, trying to hook up the lines. And uh, Fuller was in command of the Texas, which was running backwards. Found out who Henderson was, said, come on on board. He said, we need a telegraph operator. If we can get to the next depot, he said, maybe they haven't had a chance to cut the lines and we can get a message through to the Confederate Army at Chattanooga. So we'll go to the next slide. And once again, the Raiders stop again to loosen the rails. Uh, the rail tracks sections were removed. Um, certainly Robert Buffum from Massachusetts was involved in all of that. And the back, you can see the, uh, uh, the side doors were, were slid open where the, uh, the Raiders got in and out. And on the back, not in this picture, but they had just knocked the whole, all the wood uh, framing in the back so it was wide open. Now this time what they did is they took a lot of the wood rails and they put them in the boxcar. The idea was they're getting closer to the bridge that they wanted to burn, and they were going to use these rails, pile them all up inside the uh, covered bridge, and set it on fire. That was their ultimate, uh, ultimate goal right here. But uh, they did the best they could. Once again, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't bend the rails, so the, uh, and they had no room for them in the boxcar, so they couldn't take them either. So they had to uh, do the best best they can with their single crowbar. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, what he had was the idea. He's got three boxcars, and the readers were on the last boxcar, so they didn't knock knock the put a hole in uh, the other end of the boxcar, and 
between all three so they could, the Raiders could go from one boxcar to the other and then they could communicate with uh, James Andrews who was head in the locomotive. And so they uncoupled the first boxcar figuring the train behind them was just that they were gonna, gonna hit it or something. And uh, the plan probably would have worked pretty good if they were going up a hill. <laughs> but what they ended up uncoupling the car was on flat, just like you see right there in the picture on the right. So they uncoupled the last boxcar and it just sat there. <laughs> so we'll go to the next slide. Now, Fuller's in the, uh, uh, the train, the Texas. You can see it on the right going backwards. And he comes along the boxcar, slows down, crashes into it. But he's going in reverse, so it was great. Now it's uh, coupled right into the boxcar. And he continued in reverse to try to get to the next uh, depot so he can uncouple the boxcar. So we'll go to the next slide. Now that's what, that's what he wanted, the Rosaka covered bridge. That's the one they wanted to burn. And that's what actual picture of it. That's what it looks like, crosses the river. We'll go to the next slide. And there's a great picture of it. He uncouples the second boxcar, sets it on fire, and uncouples it inside the bridge. Now it didn't burn as fast as they wanted because it had been raining for two or three days and the ties were soaking wet. <laughs> so they tried and tried and tried. All it did was smolder, and they left it inside for the other engine, just uh, they wanted to burn the bridge. And there's a great uh, depiction of it there. So we'll go to the next slide. And now they're heading up, heading north. It's so Dalton, Tunnel Hill, and Ringgold. I'll go to the next slide. And now the operator, telephone operator, he notifies Chattanooga. He finally gets through. They stopped him at a Dalton Depot. He finally got through. The lines were open. He telephoned a, a message to, to notify uh, the general in Chatt Chattanooga, which was amazing. But in, right at the, almost at the end of the message, then the Raiders cut the lines up front. But it was enough of it to get through to alert the, uh, at the Rebel Army at Chattanooga. So we'll go to the next slide. And that's who we're trying to get, General Ledbetter. And there's a message right there, Confederate States of America. And we'll continue this story next week. <laughs> Dave Norton from Discovering New England History. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>